Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. And I just have one question. Uh, what the hell is going on? That's 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 my question. Yeah, it's been the week. I know we say that every week, but this week especially, I think, has, has been that week, you know? <laughs> but there were some good things that happened this week. Um, one of the good things that happened this week, I hope every one of you were, were present for, was our premiere of our interview with Stephanie Cousy, Kelly Block, Garnet Jenis, and Larry Yo Man Brock. <laughs> <laughs> Yo Man! Um, so if you haven't seen that, go and take a look. Um, uh, maybe I'll just ask Fox to throw that link in the in the live chat yeah, when we get a second. Um, but uh, please, please, please take a look at that if you haven't. And uh, we, uh, we recently dropped another interview with a former member of Parliament, uh, David Sweet, who was at one point chair of the Ethics Committee. So um, we had a good chat with him the other day, and uh, he gives his thoughts on Trudeau and Singh and everything in between, and um, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too nice about <laughs> what he said to, uh, about the Liberals and the NDP. And right off the bat, Pandemonium with a $5 super chat. Hey, everyone, hit up that like button. It's very likable and helps get the word to more people. Yes, it does indeed. And looks like everyone's getting that notification. And as we always see, the more people that hit the like, the more people are notified, which means the more people end up coming in, which means the bigger the community grows. So uh, thank you very much. And Vikram Singh with a whole bunch of emojis. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> just me, Nicole. Good to see you again with a $5 super chat. Just watch Andrew Shear's video. He just uploaded worth a watch and hit the uh, the likes peeps. Yeah, Fox was talking about uh, uh, reaching out to him and see if we can get him on Northern Perspectives. So we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Uh, Heart Singer with a member comment for one month. Just want to say thanks for your encouragement between the Hamas vote and... Uh, uh block mocking i was discouraged much love to you both yeah it's it was very easy for people to get discouraged this week i was discouraged this week i'm not gonna lie um you know i i wasn't sure how the vote was gonna go i'll be perfectly honest i i thought maybe there's a chance that they'll finally vote non-confidence because they're getting really into the thick of things in the arrive scam scandal and um, I don't know how you can have confidence in a government after that. But uh, the other part of me is like, well, Jagmeet doesn't really seem to be doing the logical thing lately. So I was really sitting on the fence about it. Um, but I'll admit, I was I was disappointed afterwards. I felt like the wind had been let out of my sails. Um, but I think the important thing to remember, because I'm sure we all felt the same, but I think the important thing to remember is that Canada isn't those 338 people that are sitting there in Ottawa. Canada's all of us. And we can make Canada better for each other by supporting each other, by talking about politics, by telling other people what's actually going on in Parliament. Because so many people don't realize, you know, they've never even heard of the Arrive Scan scandal. Um, or, or they haven't heard of the SNC-Lavalin scandal, or they have no idea what's going on in terms of, you know, broken promises with regards to pharmacare or dental care or this or that. People really do not know what's going on in Parliament. This is why it's oh so important, and this is why we rely on our community. Um, you are, you know, the biggest help in this fight because... You're the ones who are talking to people in Costco grocery lines. You're sharing these videos on your social media. You're liking the video and you're having conversations with people. You you are the ones that are helping us spread the word um, and and get people to, to talk about things. And, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, rage baiting going on uh, out there with uh, with different mediums. And they're just trying to rile people up and get people angry and, you know, throw something shocking so you click on it and say what how is my world ending now um you know everything is never as bad as it seems um but uh you know that's what we try and do here we, we try and give you a balanced perspective and if something is going to be concerning we will we will tell you that it's going to be concerning like bill c63 that's concerning and we uh, and you know we put our opinion behind that but there's you know other things that are not as concerning so um, so thank you very much for that. I want to. I've been taking a quick look at uh, at chat. I'm going to go with a a couple of things. Um, 
before Fox gets to the ground rules. So uh, first off, here's an easy one. Uh, repeat in BC, please explain the difference between member and NP supporter. There is no difference. Um, so it's just, that's what YouTube calls it. So anyone who is NP supporter is a member. So there's actually no difference in that. Um, well, technically like a member could be NP supporter or NP supporter plus, which is the second level tier. But um, the majority, like the overwhelming majority of, um, of viewers who are members are NP supporters. Right, but it's one and the same. Yeah. So. Um, we use the term interchangeably. Yeah. So repeat uh, in, in BC, your little icon there says that you're at least at uh, NP supporter. So you're good to go. Um, and uh, Floody Boy stating, why do I get the feeling that Jagmeet will vote against this budget? The real question is that if he does, uh, will he call on confidence that budget week to preserve the boundary change? Well, I have we some, were discussing that, weren't we? I have some I have some theories on that. I think I've I've. I have a good theory as to what the conservative plan has been because you know that's the one thing I was trying to do. Um, Fox was a little disheartened. I was just knee deep in thought trying to figure out what what was the play here, and I think I have a good theory about that. But we'll get into that later. Um, before we go any further, uh, Fox, do you want to go through the ground rules? Sure. Uh, so tonight is a Sunday night live stream, which means we will be doing uh, general questions in the chat. If you would like to ask a question, please tag Barnaby. Uh, you can put the at symbol and then B-A-R-N-A-B-Y and make sure you click his name uh, and then type in your, your question. Um, we're going to try to stay on topic in terms of questions. Um, and unfortunately, we may not get to all of them, but we will try to get to as many as we can. Um, also, uh, just the basic rules, respect each other, respect the platform, no selling, soliciting, or spamming, and please don't use profanity. Yeah, because uh, we do have people that are trying to educate their kids on, uh, on politics, and um, they've chosen to bring them to Northern Perspective, so we want to be mindful of that. Yeah, it was awesome, actually. We had somebody this week say, thank you so much. Um, you know, you guys are really professional, and um, I, I am trying to teach my 10-year-old about politics and you guys are our go-to place because you keep it clean so so excellent it means that uh that what we're doing is is working shane with a two dollar super chat rcmp seems worried about growing unrest yeah uh we took a look at that and if we have time we will we will talk about that a little bit um pandemonium with a 20 dollar super chat thank you so much so i did more research it turns out gc strategies didn't build taxpayers 20 million dollars for it work that wasn't done they build taxpayers two million dollars for it work and 18 million for a red <laughs> stapler was it was it a swing line stapler <laughs> did, did you ask for a margarita but you got a mai tai instead um that the whole House of Commons... No, I can't say that. I'll probably get visited by the RCMP. Um, repeat in BC with a $5 super chat. We can all help each other by volunteering for your local conservative uh, electoral district association. Yes, you sure can. Door knocking campaign coming April 6th, election day, etc. Yes, Thank you for that. absolutely. If you're not sure how to get in touch with your local EDA, if you give me two seconds here, I will make sure that I get the link so that you can find your local EDA and... Uh, and you can look them up. Uh, Marco Peruza with a $10 super chat. Thank you very much. Big changes to immigration, 300,000 fewer uh, TFRs each year until 2027. Big changes to mortgages in 2024, allowing 4.5 times your income. Conservatives are really setting the policy at this point. There you go. And we have Mike Bamlett with a $5 super chat. I passed a Kelly Block campaign sign on my way through uh, Rosetown, Saskatchewan today. I clapped and cheered out loud. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. So I just dropped that link to the EDAs in the uh, in the channel. I'm going to pin it as well over top of the rules because I think it's it's important. You can contact your EDA. There's like a form. If you find your EDA on the list, you can click it, fill out the form, and then you'll get an email back. Now, I did see some references to a couple of new names uh, in chat. So just, just out of my own curiosity, if this is your first Northern Perspective live stream, do us a favor and throw a one. No, no, I'll do a poll. Hold on. Okay. This is this is a little cleaner than ones all over the than chat. Than spamming so. chat? There you go. <laughs> yeah, just hold on one second, guys. <laughs> all right. Huntsford with a $10 super chat. Uh, there was a decent sized group of people protesting the carbon uh, scam in Welland today at the corner of Niagara Street and East West Main Street. Uh, I, of course, made sure to lay on my horn. Good honk honk. 
Absolutely. I saw one. I was driving back from my parents' house uh, yesterday, and on the highway overpass, there was a group of people, um, you know, with with the signs that said "end the carbon tax." So of course, I was beep beep in my horn, right? <laughs> So it's it's starting to get around. It's good. Mumblin' May with a $7 super jet. Hello, watch Brian Maroney's funeral yesterday, and it was interesting to see all the old guard politicians there. Uh, time when sanity ruled. It certainly feels like that, eh? You know, and, and politicians would step down if they were caught in a big scandal because that was the honorable thing to do. Shepard with a $14 super chat. Hi, guys. No soliciting it means... Uh, no recommendation for videos. There are some really good ones. <laughs> Everyone should understand. So uh, um, see what's happening in the world. Unfortunately, I don't believe YouTube allows um, links in the live chat, probably to prevent things like you know adult phishing content and, stuff and, like and that. yeah, phishing scams and stuff like that. Um, if you do join our Discord, um, I know the members on the Discord uh, like to pass links from different videos, different channels, different articles, such, such, and stuff like that, um, back and forth. So you're permitted to do that there. Um, just I don't think YouTube lets a, will let you in the chat. Yeah, the the the, the no soliciting really means you know like no um, asking people to buy your stuff and no crypto or anything no like that. yeah yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Kurt and Denise for the ten dollars super chat. We sent you a message on Messenger with an article uh, regarding the extension of the election dates and MP uh, pension. Did you guys get a chance to look at it? Well, um, we didn't get a chance to look at that, uh, Kurt and Denise. However. It's what we're going to be talking about today. So, <laughs> so um, if it is the same article, then there you go. Um, and you know, this is the challenge that we have: is we um, we we do get emails from people, we get Facebook messages from people, uh, we get people tagging us in the Discord, um, so, and then we have the comments to go through. So it is a lot for for just Fox and I to to manage. So we do appreciate everybody's patience. We we can't get to everything. We do try and read it all, though. Um, and, uh, it is, it is a challenge because it's, it's literally thousands of messages per day and I'm not over exaggerating that. So, um, so, uh, thank you very much for, for sending us, uh, any messages that you do and please don't take it personally if we can't respond to it. Uh, Goko Donnie with 10 gifted Northern perspective memberships. Thank you very much, Goko Donnie. That's great. And we also had a few come in uh, ahead of the stream. So, uh, thank you to Hiker Girl for joining as a new MP supporter. Excellent. And we have Alice Avonlea with a uh, member comment, member for five months. It says, parliamentary saying you're stupid. Wisdom chased you all of your life, but you're always faster. I that's think amazing. I, I think I've heard that one before. That's <laughs> I really haven't. That's it, awesome. That's a good one. It's a really good one. So, um, okay. Well, let's take a look at this poll. Uh, Do you want me to stop it? Sure. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna have to do some quick math here. Uh, where where did it go? Where did uh, it go? So we have oh right there. Twelve percent at yes. So four sixty one. Well, it's gonna be at least forty people. There's at least fifty five people who it's their first time. So welcome. Excellent. So, all right, folks. Um, so let's let's talk about this. Um, First, I'll go through the um, the theory that I have, and then we'll get into you know what's next because it involves Trudeau's Trudeau's Bill C sixty five, and I'll get into that. So, I was thinking on all of the events that have played up on, up into this point. So we had Jagmeet and the Pharmacare, quote unquote Pharmacare bill. You know, he was threatening to pull out. He extended the deadline changed the criteria of the deadline by all accounts because he was supposed to have the the pharmacare bill passed by the end of last year and then his deadline essentially changed to well the deadline is that they had to table it so they tabled this you know skeleton of a, of a respecting pharmacare act that doesn't really even do anything and um and I, I imagine Pierre and the Conservatives were wondering what he was going to do with that. And then they saw what he was going to do with that. He was just going to try and pass it off as, oh, yeah, this is what we wanted. Hooray. This is historical, yada, yada, yada. So then um, what was what was Pierre's next focus? Well, it's obviously going to be the April 1st carbon tax increase. So then we started 
um, getting a lot of rhetoric from the conservatives about the carbon tax and that going up. And then we had this surprise, and it literally was a surprise to all of us, um, announcement that he had this week where he said, hey, well, if the, if the, um, if Trudeau doesn't revoke the carbon tax increase on April 1st, then we're going to call a vote of non-confidence. Now, that didn't make a lot of sense, just from a non-confidence standpoint, because later that evening, there was going to be a bunch of supply, a, aka money-related votes, that were all confidence votes. So the question was, well, why, why are you separating this? Why are you making a show of this? Um, and that's where I think a bunch of people were like, oh, well, is, is this it? Does he know something? And I wondered, you know, does, does Pierre know something that we don't? And it turns out the answer was no. He didn't know something that we don't. What, um, what ended up happening was Pierre didn't show up. Justin didn't show up. Jagme didn't show up. And the Bloc and the NDP voted with the Liberals to keep confidence in the government. Based on the carbon tax. Let me say that again. Based on the carbon tax. So that's important. So I started thinking, okay. So as it relates to the budget that's coming up, I'm expecting the Bloc to vote against that because they voted against every other Trudeau budget. And Yves Blanchette had said about a month ago that they intended to continue to vote against the budget, which is a confidence vote. So then I thought back to the previous carbon tax vote where, you know, they were, they were trying to exclude all home heating in Canada and the bloc voted with the Liberals because it was carbon tax related. And the NDP, they ended up voting with the Conservatives, but it wasn't enough. So then we fast forward, you know, we, we, we take a look at, the, at this week again. On that carbon tax vote, not the non-confidence, but the carbon tax vote to that the, uh, the Conservatives put forward a motion to remove the increase, both the NDP and the Bloc voted with the Liberals. So it was, in, in hindsight, it's reasonable it's reasonable to assume that the confidence vote wouldn't have gone any different. And I think Pierre knew that. So then the question is, is why would he separate it? Why would he call a non-confidence vote? Well, I think he, he called a non-confidence vote because of this reason. So what this does is it forced the, the block MPs and the NDP MPs to say that they have confidence in this government and then go back to their writings for two weeks over Easter. They're going to hear it from their constituents. And if you're in any of those writings, make sure you let them hear it. And that's all they're going to hear. People are like, people are. They were riled up after last week and, and that non-confidence vote. So what happens next? Well, they come back and the budget is tabled on April 16th. And I think, I think Pierre doesn't intend at all, at all, to have a non-confidence vote before April 22nd. Because remember, it's better for the Conservatives if they have it after. So I think... He is uh, he's shoving like literally taking Jagmeet by the co by the, the 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 coat and shoving him in a political corner and saying, "All right, you want to go down? You're going to go down like this." Because Jagmeet got so much hate after that non-confidence vote, it's not even funny. So this takes us then to the budget vote that will probably be in May. Now. Jagmeet is going to see his polling numbers drop, no doubt, over the next couple of weeks. And then he's going to have a decision to make. Does he call a non-confidence vote? What's it going to be on? There's going to be some more arrive can hearings coming up. So there's going to be some more corruption come out. But he's also going to get to see what's in that budget. Is his pharmacare fake pharmacare in that budget? Probably not. Wouldn't not be, the way Freeland was talking. Wouldn't it be interesting if it wasn't? If it wasn't, that's his, 
that's his opportunity. Now, the problem is he screwed this all up. <laughs> As only Chegg Meat can. He screwed this up in that he um he he can't get the same fanfare that he would have before. But let's say he he thinks on it and goes past the 22nd, and then they all vote down the budget in May. Well, at that point, Canadians would be a month into the new carbon tax. People will still be letting him hear what's what their dissatisfaction is. And it it just might be enough to push them over. Now, the one thing about the pension that people keep bringing up, I want to make this very, very clear. Jagmeet does not have to go until October of 2025 to get his pension. Jagmeet Singh took office in February of 2019. That means he is eligible for his pension in February of 2025. So if he really wants, if he really wants his pension, he just has to wait until February of 2025. And then he can call an election. So either way, I don't think we're waiting until October. So let's just put that out there. And that is a complete fact. You can take that one to the bank. Now I see that we're almost 600 likes behind. So if you please hit the like button, Barnaby opens the bar at 1,000. He says he gets out the hard liquor at 1,200 likes. And I think he gets the top shelf liquor at 1,500. So please make sure that you uh, hit that like button for us. It helps push the stream out. And the 46 news people, new people are all confused. Yeah, so <laughs> our, our moderator likes to play bartender in the chat. So He likes to role play it. It's fun. <laughs> anyway, um, he's the only virtual bartender uh, on YouTube. I there you go, you that, that we know of anyway. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, yeah. Our, our names are still up. Fox is uh, poking at me. Um, we're not that vain that we're going to leave our names up the whole stream. We know who we are, and you know who we are. But um, anyhow, so it sounds like this is a play. This whole thing was a plan to put as much pressure on both the Bloc and Jagmeet, but mainly Jagmeet, because Pierre knows how the Bloc is, is going to vote. When it comes to that budget, so... It's going to be very interesting. And the other thing is that it's not just Jagmeet that this pressure is going to be on. It's actually going to be far more on Jagmeet's caucus. Because Jagmeet is the one that's kind of running the show. These guys are the ones that they have to decide if they want their seats. Well, they have to decide whether or not they're going to listen to what Jagmeet says. I mean, he's telling them, oh, vote with the liberals. And it's up to them whether or not to actually do that. Right. Because technically, if they want to get technical, the supply confidence agreement is over as it related to what was voted on at the NDP convention and the conditions which the Liberals broke. Technically, it's broken. They just have to decide if they're going to continue voting with them. So anyway, we're going to get into uh, to some more as to, I think Justin Trudeau probably smells this and he smells something is probably not going to go well at the budget and he seems to be trying to pull out all the stops in order to prevent that from happening but before we get to that let's get to some housekeeping so we have uh i believe that that's uh, malbert 82 with a uh joining uh or looks like he's renewing his membership thank you very much jerry savoy with a five dollar super chat send email to all conservatives mps as canadian citizen have non-confidence votes so we could vote out a prime minister out of office and make them accountable. Excellent. That's great to see. Shepard with a $14 super chat. Hello again. I would just buy a super chat and show uh, the name within the message. And if you guys want to expand, uh, feel free. Just didn't want to step out of bounds. How do we ask questions again, Fox? Um, so on Sunday nights, um, because we are not pressed for time and we're not trying to chew through a two hour committee, we open up the questions. So if you would like to ask a question, you don't have to do a super chat. If you don't want to, you can just tag Barnaby by typing at B A R N A B Y. You should see his name pop up in the box, click the box and then type your message. There you go. Uh, crash 78, uh, member comment for two months. 
Any society is three meals away from revolution. Starve a society for three meals and you will have anarchy on your hands. Something like that, an old quote. Yeah, I've heard something like that. Uh, and it's uh, it's a powerful one for sure. Thanks, Crash. Jarsha with a $2 super chat. I thought only the budget was uh, both uh, supply and confidence. No, it's actually any um, any 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 bill that is related to money is a, is a confidence vote uh, because you have to have confidence in the government actually spending the money um, properly to actually run the government. So there's like all of the all of the fall economic statement votes that they were doing in um, in in December. Those were all confidence votes. So that's that's the thing that. Um, that people don't typically see is you only really hear of a confidence vote when it's publicized. But there are so many confidence votes actually going on all the time. But it's typically only the big ones where a government falls because that's where you know a party gets to make a statement. So it's 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 how they it's how they uh, they they get attention. Remember, politics is all about you know press and and taking advantage of, of publicity, right? So the mainstream media what what votes are they going to typically pay attention to they're going to pay attention to the budget because without the budget government can't run and two they paid attention to pierre when he announced that he was going to call a confidence vote even though there was three or four other confidence votes held later that night it was his because he publicized it and and attached it to the carbon tax so um and in the westminster parliamentary system the ruling party or the governing party including the prime minister need to have the confidence of the house in order to govern um, this is from the parliamentary website it says the fact that the prime minister and the cabinet are responsible to or must answer to the house of commons for their actions is a fundamental characteristic of parliamentary government they must also enjoy the support and the confidence of a majority of the members of the house in order to remain in office so if you have more than half of the house saying we've lost confidence confidence in your ability to run this country why would they be allowed to continue running the country um and and that's how a government falls right um Nelik with a five dollar super chat ding dong hit that like button folks going to my first uh pierre polyev rally on wednesday in edmonton any questions you want me to ask yeah ask him if he'll come on northern perspective <laughs> <laughs> no no just have a good time you don't have to ask any questions on our behalf we do appreciate it though yeah honestly um just ask what you want to ask ask the things you want to know this man's going to be the next prime minister so ask him the things that are are important to you and ask him ask him how he's going to be different than justin trudeau ask him how he's going to bring accountability back ask him whatever is important to you no, like like don't listen the best advice I can give you is don't listen to us in, in terms of what to ask him, even though I told you a bunch of things to ask. They're just suggestions. You have to be the informed voter. You you need to decide what is important to you. There's going to be issues that are important to everybody. You know, there's 50 million things that people actually bring up to us on a weekly basis. You need to decide what is important to you and your family to give someone your vote. That's the question you need to ask. Don't listen to anybody else. That's something that should come from from within. That that would be my my recommendation. Um, Diane Sylvain with a twenty dollars super chat. Hi there. Loved your two videos with Vesper and with your former member of Parliament. Uh, both were good videos. Um, oh, yeah. We didn't say he was our former member of parliament. We just said he was a former member of parliament. Um, both were good videos about the non-confidence vote. Being a deep thinker by nature, I feel Pierre did that vote to show Canadians who is not uh, on their side. I completely agree, Diane. And, and he did that strategically leading into two weeks of constituency weeks. So, um, so those people are going to know who did and did not vote for, for this government. And we have Joan... Oops. Uh, Joan5656 with a $7 super chat. I emailed my liberal MP about the carbon tax, complained about the cost of food, and she replied with a list of social services for me. Wow. Wow, that's tone deaf. Wow. You know, and, and this is the problem with the liberals, especially, but I would say the NDP as well, is that, you know, they create these problems and then have to find solutions for the problems instead of, like, maybe just don't do that thing in the first place. Um. Joan, if you're comfortable, only if you're comfortable, would you mind emailing that to Northern Perspective? Um, because what I may do is 
I may redact your name and redact your email address and all of your information. And I may post that on, on X for all to see. So, and what I mean for all to see is your email, what your, what your complaint is, and then the Liberal MP's response to that and, and how tone deaf that is. So Yeah, because that's shameful. Yeah. Like the MPs shouldn't be like, oh, we made life worse for you. Oh, here's a bunch of charities that you can go to or, or here's a bunch of social services in your area. No, that's not the point. The point is stop increasing the carbon tax. That's right. the point. So only if you're comfortable. If you're not, don't worry about it at all. Um, but uh, these are the things that I think it's important for all Canadians to see how these Liberals are responding to legitimate concerns. Coco Dani with a $10 super chat. On a fun note, CBC is the first funded mainstream media to have more employees than viewers. <laughs> oh, small wins still count. Amazing. That was perfect. That's amazing. Um, Jonathan Hodges with a $7 super chat. Hello from Calgary. Enjoying your analysis. RCMP report is very telling of displeasure in the ranks. I'll open bourbon at 1,500 <laughs> likes. There nice. you go. Uh, and Patriot Girl, he he. Welcome to NP Supporter. Nice to have you. Adam Kennedy, gifting five Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much for that. Glenn Stewart with a $5 super chat. My printer will be busy and running out of ink. I'm planning on sending letters to all MPs. Good for you, Glenn. Yes, and this is important to remind everybody that you can send your MP or any MP a paper, like a letter mail letter, um, without having to put a stamp on it, as long as you address it to their House of Commons address. Yeah, for free, because posted is paid for by Parliament. Um, Which I suppose is in turn paid for by us. But what we mean is that you don't need to put a stamp on the envelope. Yes. And you can mail as many as you want. And uh, the uh, uh, as per the uh, David Sweet, who we interviewed the other day, he recommends that you uh, that you send send a letter regularly, once a week, once a month, whatever it is. And if we get you know, a hundred people doing that, then that's what a hundred letters a week, four hundred a month, and that adds up, and it starts to let them know uh, what's going on. If we get a thousand, well, now we're now we're talking. The legal cat lady with a two dollar super chat. My liberal MP David Lemony resigned on January twenty fifth. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! Funny story. My parents actually went to high school with Lemony, and uh, when he resigned, I texted my mom and I was like, "Hey, your buddy Lemony resigned," and she's like, "He wasn't my friend." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Diane Sylvain with a ten dollar super chat. Best quote of the week from committees, except for Yo Man, was from Mister Barrett to Miss Khalid. I can explain it to you, Miss Khalid, but I cannot understand it for you. <laughs> man that's a good one uh heart singer with a 20 dollar super chat weird question is there any recourse to pressure the governor general or the king for an election i keep hearing we have no recall legislation it would be funny to inundate the governor general and the king with mail um the king can't really step in but the um, governor general is the king's representation here in canada um i mean she seems like she's just on the trudeau payroll but i suppose you could contact her i don't i don't think citizens are, are not permitted to put it this way um i would say there there is no downside to to more letters to people in in government uh even if it's the governor general saying we need an election now uh that would be my um, um my my thought on that and uh three petitions actually were presented this week from a uh, uh mp jamie schmale out of uh, kawartha lakes and those petitions were actually related to introducing recall legislation. And for those that don't know what recall legislation is, that would allow the Canadian public to demand the resignation of somebody in office, a.k.a. Justin Trudeau, if that legislation were, uh, were actually active. So, uh, so thanks for bringing that up, Hartzinger. And it is, um, it is something that would be really, really valuable in this political system, given that the Liberal Party doesn't, you know, have a means of, of dis deposing their leader. So why should the Canadian people not? And uh, Nilik with a $5 super chat, I will be asking uh, Pierre my questions, but a lot aligns with you guys uh, on things. But I am also someone, uh, uh, but I am also someone is a voice for others, so I'm pleased to represent. That's excellent. Thanks Thank uh, you. for that, uh, Nilik. Uh, very stand up of you. Okay. We're about 500 likes behind still, so please hit that like button for us so we can get more Canadians to join us. Now, what are we going to get into today? So I mentioned that it seems that Justin Trudeau is 
concerned. Concerned that something may happen to his government shortly. And it seems that he's trying to legislate his way to bribe some of the MPs. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. So, first reading, liberal plan to quietly delay election would secure millions for their doomed MPs. And I'll let uh, Fox take over this from here. The subheading says, if held on its originally scheduled date, as many as two dozen liberal MPs face defeat without qualifying for a gold-plated pension. Top story. The Liberals have quietly tabled a revision to the Elections Act that would have the effect of ensuring that more than two dozen MPs will qualify for gold-plated parliamentary pensions, even if they lose the next election. Under the existing terms of Canadian electoral law, Canada's next mandatory general election date is October 20th, 2025, a function of the Elections Act requiring a general election to be held, quote, on the third Monday of October in the fourth calendar year following polling day for the last general election, end quote. The revision, contained in a package of proposed amendments, is a one-time change moving the date one week later to October 27th. Uh, the stated reason for this is so Election Day won't fall amidst Diwali, the five-day Hindu festival of lights. And honestly, when I had heard that they were moving it, um, I, ha I have found out about it on Reddit and... I had just said, oh, it's Diwali that day. Like, of course, they don't want to have polling on that day because people will not come to the polls. People will not vote. Um, Diwali is a very important holiday uh, in the Hindu calendar, from what I understand. So, of course, you want it to be accessible to um, more Canadians. No, no problem, right? Let's move it. And then this article came out. Uh, the shifting of the date also ensures that a number of MPs first selected in 2019, many who, have N who are NDPers or Liberals projected to lose in 2025, will just pass the six-year threshold required to qualify for a lifetime parliamentary pension that starts as early as age 55. This includes the Environment Minister Stephen Gilbeau, Treasury Board President Anita Anand, and both Heather McPherson and Matthew Green, the NDP MPs, who were the loudest champions of Monday's attempt to have Canada recognize Palestinian statehood. Among the other potential beneficiaries of this change are Jamie Batiste, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, and Jenica Atwin, who recently made headlines after a constituent emailed her about synagogue vandalism in her writing, and she replied with a lament about Gazan atrocities. So, that was the article, and um, uh, as was pointed out by... Uh, I believe it was the super chat earlier. Um, I think this was pointed out to us uh, at least a couple of uh, occasions, but we we also came across this as well, um, as it was it was it was circling the rounds in in the conservative political sphere quite uh, quite prominently. Now, we decided to not just take this for its word, and we decided to actually look into this. So, this was actually a bill tabled this week. Bill C-65, an act to amend the Canada Elections Act. And so first uh, reading, that was completed on March 20th of 2024. Then we said, all right, where is this in the actual bill? So it's actually here. It's a very, very, very long bill, almost as long as Bill C-63. But the section in question that we're looking at is section 56.1, of the act that is replaced by the following. Subject to subsection one, each general election must be held on the third Monday of October in the fourth calendar year following polling day for the last general election. That is normal. However, if Monday, October 20th, 2025 would be the day fixed for voting at a general election under the subsection, the general election must instead be held on Monday, October 27th, 2025. 25. Why is that important? Well, 
because anyone that was elected on October 20th, 2019, they would actually not get their pension if the election was held on October 20th, 2025, because they would be one day shy, one day shy <laughs> of actually their six years because they technically would have taken office and, and were elected on the 21st. So this pushes that date six days later so that all of those MPs that were voted in in 2019 would qualify for their pension. Now, it's intentional that the um, that MPs actually don't qualify for their pension until their second term. Why? Because it means you got to work for it. <laughs> That's what it means. You have to work for it. So this um, this is pretty sketchy. And if the conservatives did notice this, uh, Damien Curiek, uh, hero of, uh, of being kicked out of parliament uh, for calling the prime minister a liar repeatedly, he actually um, voiced this on, on Twitter saying, you know, so the uh, liberals want to change the election date uh, from October 20th to uh, October 27th. Any guesses as to why? So now this doesn't, this doesn't affect Jagmeet at all. So he has no horse in this race just to make sure everybody understands. And there's there's a few uh, NDP MPs who, who are affected by this, Matthew Green being one of them. Um, now, he's expected... That's the thing that the article didn't talk about. Matthew Green is expected to retain his seat because he is the MP for, I believe, it's Hamilton Centre. Hamilton Centre... always NDP. Yeah, Hamilton Centre is like the, the home of NDP. Yeah. So that's not going to change. He doesn't care. He's going to he's going to get his seat. Um, but for the other liberals, yeah, maybe that's you know that that's something to consider. But here's the other thing. Do you think that this is going to make Canadians um, upset or calm <laughs> when everyone actually learns what this is do what this is doing? My guess is is most Canadians aren't going to be happy because what this does is this would give on average these these MPs a 1.3 million dollar sever or a, a 1.3 million dollar pension package each of them each of them once they leave uh, once they leave government so that's not something that I'm interested in paying for I don't think it's something that you're interested in paying for, and I don't think it's uh, something that Canadians across this country are interested in paying for, and I don't think it's something that we should pay for. No, I don't think it's deserved at all. You're rigging the numbers so that these people can qualify for a pension. How is that fair to Canadians? You know, you could say, oh, well, how is it fair to the MPs to have an election one day before they qualify for their pension? Tough luck. If you want to do it, if, if you want your pension, you need to do a good job and you need to get reelected. Done. So here is my here is my fix to this situation. I would like to propose an amendment to Bill C65. I would like to suggest that the election be held one week earlier. October 13th, 2025. Seems fair to me. You're we're respecting the um we're respecting the Hindu holiday, as we should, 100%. So why shouldn't we have the election one week earlier? Because then we're also respecting the spirit of which MPs actually are able to get their pension. You want your pension? Well, you got to earn it. So if, um, if you're going to be sending a letter to your MPs, my suggestion is include that. We're going to be writing a letter and we're going to we're going to send it from us so we won't be able to publish it. Um, but we're going to ask that B Bill C-65 be amended so that the election is held on October 13th instead of October 20th. So that way everybody wins, right? But it's just disgusting to me that Trudeau and Singh, because this is part of Singh's uh, electoral reform, is it not? that they're trying to manipulate the system in order to then manipulate their MPs. You know, if you want this pension, you need to keep us in power and you need to keep voting confidence in the government until 2025. And that's how you'll get your pension. Mm. 
not realizing that if these MPs were to say, no, screw you, I'm going to vote non-confidence, that they have a better chance of getting reelected and then they'll be paying into their pension more and they'll be getting a bigger pension um, because they'll get reelected. Yeah, so it's um, it's only fair. And, you know, <laughs> I, I'm seeing some of the responses. Yes, it would be great if we could have an election now, but unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> we uh we're not there yet um but let's pause and uh and take a couple super chats and i think i'm i'm missing one or two uh here so fox can make sure i'm getting them all mm-hmm. um, um looks like we start at marie perrin yep yeah, uh with a five dollar super chat not just mps uh call ontario housing the girl was rude said we have at least one year waiting period seniors and low income needed wow shepherd with a 14 dollar super chat how do we engage this entire uh, pension thing? It shouldn't matter six years or two terms, even if it means eight years. Please show me anywhere else this happens. LOL Cypher, I was just doing the math. <laughs> yeah. uh, it doesn't happen anywhere else. That's the thing. You can do a crappy job, you can get ethics violations, and you still get your pension. How does that work? Uh, Trish Pruel with a $2 super chat. October 13th, 2025 is Thanksgiving. Uh huh. Then we'll move it to October 14th. There you go. <laughs> I'm flexible. Thank you very much for that, Trish. <laughs> I'm flexible. See? Uh, Patriot Girl he, he with a tw- uh, $2 super chat. They want pension cancel Bill C-63 and carbon tax. No, um, they can cancel that and not get their pension. I'm I'm not that flexible. <laughs> and we have a $50 super chat from Stephen Hallowell. Thank you very much. It says, I love what you guys do. I might have another person for you guys to interview. He's a lefty but could have good conversation. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we would actually welcome uh, left-leaning people to, uh, to have a conversation with. Or liberal MPs, NDP MPs. Um, I would say block, but you and I don't exactly speak French, so. Yeah, um, but we. Um, but language barriers aside, the block, like we welcome anybody to come on. It's just, um, we have reached out to MPs in the past and we did have success with one liberal MP um where we did an interview and he had requested that we not put it on youtube right away or at all because i mean it was his first time meeting us we have these weird puppets we wouldn't share our actual names like we get it it's weird right um so we said sure no problem and we we thought we were building a relationship with this individual and then he went all over twitter calling conservative nazis and stuff like that so yeah that's how that went yeah, but it's not going to stop us from reaching out and uh, and asking other MPs to, to come on because I think it's important. Uh, you know, we'll treat them with respect, but we'll also ask them hard questions. But because... we haven't had any any takers yet. Yeah, so um, so we're we're still going to ask, and uh, hopefully at some point somebody gets the message that you should really engage this community because this is. <laughs> This is where your main opposition is, and if you want to change some minds, then you need to you need to talk to us. Uh, Shane with a two dollar super chat. How about a retirement cell instead? Yeah, I can go with that. I can go with that. <laughs> and thank you, Dan Demand nine six six with a ten dollar super chat. It says just a prediction. I think Jagme wants to see the libs not have pharmacare when the budget is out. He can pull the trigger and call an election, even though he would have blown with the boundary change. Well, see, Jagme has the ability to spin this right. The liberals don't. Jagme has the ability to say, well, you know, they lied to us. And after examining the bill and, you know, what they were actually going to put in the budget, this was not, you know, they acted in bad faith, yada, yada. Like, so he, he, you know, he has, he has an opportunity to spin this. And, you know, it gives them another month or two to, to raise the, the dozens of dollars that I'm sure that their party gets for fundraising um, instead of the millions of dollars that the conservatives get. So, um, but hopefully, hopefully he actually looks at doing something, um, and I hope his caucus forces him to do something because this is this is it. Like, this is your opportunity to, to, to turn things around. It's all it's all uphill from, from here for both the liberals and the NDP, unless unless the conservatives manage to screw this up to, to no end, which I don't see them doing. They've been very careful up to this point and very disciplined. So I don't see this happening. They. They're, they're going to be in real trouble the longer this goes. So it's up to them. Uh, Darcy Miller. Oh, sorry. Huntsford with a $10 super chat. I know you just said you won't be posting your letter due to your anonymity, but could you uh, post a basic outline of things 
to say in said letters to MPs. Yes, we can do that, but we encourage you to just put it in your own words. That way it doesn't look like a campaign to to the MPs' offices. Yeah, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Um, unfortunately, it's just been crazy busy around the house here, um, and I haven't had time to sit down and do it, but I wanted to do kind of like a template on what you should be writing to your MP, um, how to get kind of like a good response from your MP if, if you get one at all. Sometimes they ignore them, but not every letter needs needs a response, for example. What it would basically be is like, hi, my name is so-and-so, you know, this is my story, like a few sentences about this is my background, this is why I'm writing to you. Maybe I'm a single mom who is having to work three jobs just to make ends meet and the carbon tax is really hard and, you know, we might be losing the house or something like that. And then this is what I expect you as the MP to do about it. And then, you know, I await your reply or I'd like to book an appointment to speak to you in person, whatever it might be. So I was uh, planning on doing up some sort of template like that. Um, I just, I might need a little bit of time to put it together and then we can definitely release it to the community into our Facebook and to our ex. Yeah, one of the pieces of advice that uh, that we can give is uh, don't make it very, very, very long because at that point it will never make it into the MP's hands. A um, couple paragraphs, you know, an int uh, introductory paragraph, as uh, as Fox said, uh, maybe a couple paragraphs, you know, short paragraphs, couple a couple sentences each of your of your main issue, and then and then sign that off because you want you want it to be accessible, you want it to be easy to read, and you don't want it to you don't want it to take a long time to read. And the other thing, no matter how upset you are about something, um, you need to make sure that you're writing in an articulate. Um, like straightforward manner you don't want to be using curse words you don't want to be calling names you don't want to be making threats especially um, I was actually reading in the newspaper that they're saying there's a lot of MPs receiving letters and emails that contain threats that's the exact opposite of what you want to do um, you want to let them know you're not happy but if you do it in an articulate manner be like listen you guys broke this country I expect you to fix it tell me how you're going to fix it yeah, and you know we we use you know to make sure that we're communicating our languages as best as possible. Um, we use online thesauruses. We use dictionary.com. We use you know ChatGPT sometimes too. We pass it by friends and family members. Like, yeah. hey, can you just read this for me so that I know it's okay to send? Like the the best the the, the best way to chew somebody out, especially when it's somebody in Parliament, is if you do it with nice good words because it sounds very professional and they cannot rebut that with well i'm not responding to somebody with foul language because you're not using foul language you're using uh professionally um what would what would the word be um you're, you're giving them a a, a very down. cordial dressing down yeah and uh, because you want something from this person you yeah. want them to vote a certain way so if you call them an asshole you're not going to get them to listen to you you're not they're not going to do what you want <laughs> So, uh, Darcy Miller with a ten dollars super chat. All premiers against the carbon tax should take the the tack of Mo and stop collecting. Stand together and force the election that way. Wouldn't that be nice? You imagine that. They should all introduce legislation in in their uh, their provincial parliament that would essentially stop them from collecting the carbon tax. Imagine that. Meanwhile, here in Ontario, Doug Ford is letting them take HST on top of our carbon tax, so yeah. we're getting hit twice. Thanks, man. Idiot. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we also have Wesley Snipes with a $5 super chat. Love what you do. Getting clarity on parliament and the house. Excellent. That's, uh, Thank that's you. what we want. That's great feedback. Thank you. And we have Hunsford with another $5 super chat. Thank you very much. A template. That is what I meant. LOL. Thank you very much. Fox, no big rush, but hurry. <laughs> LOL. I will promise that I will set aside some time this week and I will, I will try my best to, to get a template going. And pa uh, Pam Lambert with a $2 super chat. I thought they had to be in two full terms. No, six years. Six years. Which is usually, well, I guess it's not two term full terms. Yeah, it's a term and a half. So that that would typically get you through a majority government and a minority government. So because minority governments only typically last 2.3 years. So there you go. Um, all right. So that's the um, that's the bill. And that's C-65. Um and um i think uh, i think at this point barnaby why don't we start getting some questions um my first question is why are we not at 1800 likes we're at 1470 uh so 
Let's get, get those likes up, please. Let's get fit to 1500 so we can get the bourbon out. And to the new people here, we we don't ask for likes because we want people to like the show. Um, we hope people like the show. But likes is what YouTube uses in order to um, determine how and where to push this out to other people. So the more likes a stream has, then YouTube will say, oh, well, this is, this is something that people are are watching and people want to see and then it will it will recommend it to more viewers and because youtube isn't that great in notifying even our subscribers uh, of any channel never mind northern perspective that live streams are up that new videos are up um, this is a way to to kind of force youtube to put this in front of people's eyes so um so that's why we constantly ask for the likes. Uh, another Canadian with a 279 Super Chat. Thank you very much. It's not you versus MP. It's you and MP versus the problems. Yes, Correct. I say this all the time about marriage. It's not you and your spouse. Or sorry, it's not you versus your spouse when there's a problem. It's you and your spouse together versus the problem. You so got to work go. together to fix the problem. Even if it was your spouse that created the problem, you got to work together to fix it. And Casper H. jumping in with 10 Northern Perspective gifted memberships. Thank you so much, Casper. We really, really appreciate your support. Uh, okay. So let's let me flip, flip over here. And looks like we have some questions rolling in. Thank you very much, Barnaby. Uh, okay. Uh, so Leslie Robbins with a question. Uh, I was wondering why the Liberals put the tax increase on the 1st when I realized that tour tourism begins on the 1st, so it is targeting those businesses. Actually, that's not the reason, Leslie. Although that might be kind of a perk of it. Yeah. So a the, the government fiscal year, uh, it doesn't end on December 31st like many other businesses. It actually ends on March 31st. So... Um, that means the new government fiscal year begins on April 1st. That's why MPs get their raises on April 1st. And that's why these types of revenue models and taxes, they all typically take effect on April 1st because it's the first day of the new fiscal year. Uh, good question. Diane Savane with a $50 super chat. Thank you so much. Another out of touch liberal MP Pam Damoff said this past week in ethics committee that quote, Canadians should look at the Taliban if they think Trudeau is corrupt, end quote. Like that even came close to comforting Canadians. What the? Oh my gosh, I saw that in our comment section today. I don't recall if it was you, Diane, or if it was somebody else who had said it. And, and I was just like, is this how low we're setting the bar? Like, is this how we should aspire to be? Like, oh, well, at least we're not as bad as the Taliban. Yeah, at least we're not the Taliban. Uh, what the hell is going on? Like, that's <laughs> awful. That's awful. I'm sitting here kind of like incredulous smirking slash laughing, but like that's disgraceful. Like that's <laughs> just think about that. Like, uh, like that's gross. How could you say that? It's almost like saying to a Canadian that has a tent that's living on the street. Well, at least you have a tent. Like that's like, not the bar. So awful. That is not the bar, and that's not what you say. Guess who's not going to get elected? You know, I'm just going to look up Miss Pam Damoff right now. Let's uh, let's let's just have some fun, everybody. <laughs> so let's let's take a well. Cypher's doing that. Pam Damoff was actually one of the ones that we had initially saw on the live vote because we were watching uh, the non-confidence vote live on Thursday night. She had voted yes, so she oh, well, had voted with the conservatives. <laughs> There you go. That's why. <laughs> you know what? She should have voted yes and crossed the floor, and maybe she would have a seat come next election. What is it that you do? Well, I can tell you what. This, I can't tell you what she does. I can tell you what's going to happen. She's going to get her ass voted out <laughs> the next election. Goodbye. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so there you go. Pam Dama. That's usually the answer to, to all these questions. Um Glenn Stewart with a $10 super chat. Canadians do not deserve to be living in tents because the prime minister wants to be a narcissistic fool looking out for nobody but himself. I guess this is not the best line to be included. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's the thing, right? Like Canadians who are living in their cars or living in their tents, who've had to move out of their house and move in with somebody else. It's not right. And it wasn't like this going on nine years ago 
Well, so, and it's not going to be like this when Trudeau's out of office. It's going to be a rough start. Let's all realize that right now that Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives, they're not like Batman. They can't just swoop in and kick all the bad guys out and then everything's going to be better. It's not a comic book, right? Um, it's going to take time and it's going to suck for a little while. But together, we're going to rebuild this country so that it's the Canada that we all remember. And... Uh... Hopefully we will recognize it again in the, as, as the country we grew up in. Well, Cowell Chuck with a $5 super chat. I have to say we have the best community in the world. Thank you all in chat and Northern Perspective for all you do. Love it. And like you guys, you guys make the community and you make it so easy for us. And, and we just thank you so much. Like there's, there's no, there's no problems in chat. Everyone is super nice to each other and respectful and we're all pulling in the same direction, even though, you know, People may come from different backgrounds. You may have slightly different political uh, aspirations and desires for this country, but we all can agree on one thing and that we need to make Canada great again. Um, and we will. Absolutely. Uh, Claire Enright with a 279 Super Chat. Thank you so much for that, Claire. If you wanted to actually say something, go ahead and tag Barnaby and we'll make sure that we uh, that we say it for you. And we'll, one uh, WW guy with a $5 Super Chat. Um, can a majority government change existing pension, i.e. change rules from six years to 10 years and cancel all past MPs pensions who made six years but not 10 could save millions? Wouldn't that be fun? I don't think legally they can say to all the MPs who have qualified for their pension at, a, at six years, okay, well, you no longer qualify because we're changing it to 10. Yeah, I don't think they could retro retroactively do it, but they could no. change the rules going forward. Yeah, exactly. So that is absolutely something that they could do for the future. Lady Loves Cats with a $20 super chat. I heard that the bloc would have voted with the Conservatives had the non-confidence vote not been tied to the carbon tax. Did I dream that? No, and that's that's what I was saying earlier. That's Cypher's theory, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, um, Lady Loves Cats, is that because it was tied to the carbon tax, um, they voted against it. And I think... I think that's why Pierre tied it to the, uh, to the carbon tax to make the bloc vote against it. Well, because the conservatives are third in Quebec. So if they are trying to say to the people of Quebec, look, the bloc doesn't even care about you. Come vote for us. We'll get rid of the carbon tax. Right. So it's um, it, it was a very strategic move and calculated by, uh, by the conservatives. And again, uh, somebody may, uh, mentioned it before. They want everybody to know across this country who is with Canadians. The majority of Canadians want elections. So who's with those people and who's against them? So it was a very, very calculated move. Um, so that is why he tied it to the carbon tax, because he knew the bloc would vote against it. Again, the bloc is expected, uh, and this will be no surprise, to vote against the budget, meaning voting non-confidence uh, for the Trudeau government. So it's... Uh, so the rest of this is pressuring the NDP caucus to make Jagmeet essentially choose. Do you do you want your seat? Do you want your your you know more more money for your pension? And to the NDP caucus, do you guys actually want a shot at getting reelected and retaining your seat, or do you want to go down in flames? That's basically the choice that he's putting in in front of them. Well, we have to remember, like. Most of the MPs, they're not evil. They're just regular people. They're just regular people that have a passion for their job and they think that they're doing the right thing for the most part. Um, so I don't think there's very many of them who are just like, well, I'm going to put in my six years. It's going to be a slog, but I'm going to get my pension and then I'm going to screw off and you'll never hear from me again. Most of them are not going to be like that. Most of them legitimately do love their work and they do want to do a good job. Well, they have to go back to their communities after this. <laughs> like that, yeah. Don't forget that. They have to go back to their communities and do you want to be a pariah? Like really? Because... M MPs after six years, they're 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 not they're not millionaires like most most MPs, um, like Jamil Giovanni. He's he's not going to be a millionaire after after six years, after four years, not a chance, right? So well, not when the cost of living in this country is so no. high. <laughs> like 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 uh, there what was it? There's a Liberal MP that was saying that they couldn't afford a house. Like there you go. Uh, Peter Ungerman, member for four months. Thanks for sticking with us, along with a person uh, with all the personal problems. I'm going through my life. Our government gives me a carbon tax hike on my birthday. Oh, that sucks. Peter. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, buy gas on the 31st and give them the finger, I guess. Um, that's at least something. And Heartsinger with a $2 super chat. Has Friedland already dipped into our uh, CCP? No. 
Not that, uh, not that we are aware. And Daniel with a 279 super chat. Uh, after Trudeau, it will take time to undo the damage. Yes, it sure will. And did that hurt with a member comment for four months? As my father used to say about first Trudeau PM, he is a waste of skin. History repeats itself. Sorry, did you read this one from Night Snow Sky about the Clarity Act? Uh, nope. Okay, why don't you read it and I'll let you know what the Clarity Act is. I'm trying to find it. Oh, you don't see it. Okay. Um, so, Night YouTube Snow sucks. Sky with a 279 Super Chat says, will a premier use the Clarity Act? And so I had no idea what that was while I was sitting here waiting for Cypher to read the others. So I looked it up. It says the Clarity Act, known as Bill C-20 before it became law, is legislation passed by the Parliament of Canada that established the conditions under which the government of Canada would enter into negotiations that might lead to cessation following such a vote by one of the provinces. The Clarity Bill was tabled for first reading in the House of Commons on the 13th of December 1999 and it passed on March 15th, 2000, etc. I'd have to get into that to uh, um, completely understand that. So um, maybe at some point, if Fox is, there, is uh, talking for any extended period of time on on the stream tonight, which I don't know if that's going to happen, um, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can take a quick look. Shame of the $2 Super Chat, the road to hell is paid with liberal intentions. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. Oh, Craig Robertson uh, with a $5 super chat. Thanks for everything, Cypher and Fox. In the words of the great Red Green, keep your stick on the ice. We're all in this together. Amen to that, Craig. Uh, and Glenn Stewart with a $5 super chat. I keep crying at the way Canada has become. I hitch hike across Canada in the 70s and met so many beautiful people. Yeah, you, and you probably wouldn't dare do that you now. You know, though, the, the beautiful people are still there. We really are. As Canadians, we're, we're a very friendly and caring bunch of people and i think that's the one thing that we need to remember again these guys in ottawa they're not canada we are canada canadians are canada and we can make the world around us better we can make our country better by being kind to each other and i know that sounds really kind of cliche but it's true i mean yes things really suck right now in terms of the economic situation the housing crisis the carbon tax but Sometimes just being kind to the people around you, it helps them and it makes you feel better too. So no act of kindness is too small. Yeah, We'll just say that. Uh, Goko Dani with a $10 super chat. Of all tyrannies, one sincerely exercised uh, for the good of its victim may, the, may be the most oppressive. Good quote, Goko Dani. And Claire Enright with a $14 super chat. How much influencers does the how much influence does the majority liberal senators have when passing bills i'm thinking that pierre will not be able to pass bills because of liberal senators um it's it's not like it's not like the states where um where the house passes um uh bills and then it goes to um uh to the other place as they call it and um and, and then they just die. Um, that's that's not the way it works in Canada. Um, the, the senators, you know, they, they may try to issue certain types of amendments, but in the end, um, you know, it, 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 the bills do get passed. So it's, it's not like the states. Um, it, it may take a lot longer to get through, uh, which is unfortunate, but, um, but the bills actually do get passed. So P Pierre will be able to pass his legislation. And the main job of the Senate is to make sure that there are no charter rights that are, are violated. being violated by these new bills, like Bill C-63, for example. Uh, Austin Gauthier with a $20 super chat. Hey, Cypher and Fox, I was wondering if you guys would potentially be interested in releasing a video on what the requirements are or what the process would be uh, for someone to run as an MP uh, or government in general. Um, Possibly if we have time. I know we have been speaking with a, um, uh, is, is he the president yes. of the EDA? Yeah, the president of the EDA uh, out in Quebec. I won't tell you which one. But, um, and, and we've been trying to convince him to come on because we've been saying, you know, people really want to hear about the background, like how it works in the background. Because you don't just, you know, show up one day and go, hey, put my name on that ballot. You know what I mean? There's a whole process and there's a whole team behind the scenes. And um, I, I feel like people would really be interested in something like that. So we are kind of trying to work on something like that. Um, 
it just i suppose is time permitting yeah so stay tuned um so so there, there's going to be something to to that degree but uh, excellent suggestion austin and alice avonley with a ten dollar super chat abbreviation of rob schneider canada has either a huge homeless problem or a gigantic camping success story jeez thanks rob <laughs> <laughs> you can do it anyway um and uh shane with a two dollar super chat sorry fox but i'm running out of politeness yeah i hear you shane i hear it you. is tough some days and you know what that's a perfectly valid feeling um you know even from where we're sitting you know here at northern perspective some days it really feels like the government's just beating down on all of us and we're helpless and hopeless and there's nothing we can do but it's it's so important not to let them make you feel like that and I well, think, go ahead. I was going to say, like, here's here's the thing that just popped into my head. The way to take back Canada is to exemplify being Canadian. What do I mean by that? The reason why the trucker convoy was so powerful and it was so successful is because... There was no violence. Well, there was no violence and... It was literally Canadians being Canadian. It was like one of the most Canadian things to do, right? It was to show up and, yeah, there was some horn blaring, but there was no violence. There was music. There was dancing. There was barbecues. Like, it was one of the most Canadian things to do. And, and everyone just, you know, you met thousands of people from across the country. And... And what I was going to finish up by saying was that don't ever let them take your humanity away from you being a good person is it, it's it's what defines us right if if trudeau wants to be a jerk that that reflects on him it doesn't reflect on us as canadians what we have to do is even when it's hard just be kind to each other because the people beside you, your neighbors, your friends, your family, they're all suffering just as badly. And if we support each other together, we are going to rise up and and go beyond what is happening right now. We are going to beat this government because they can't they can't hide forever. They can't hide behind this coalition forever. October 2025 is coming if an election does not happen before that point. And if we're all supporting each other, we can beat this government together. Well, and I see Shane, you're saying like the cops were, pretty, or were plenty violent. Yeah, they were. But the important thing is, is like, what was the narrative that came out of that? It wasn't that the protesters were violent, right? So in a lot of ways, like the convoy won, right? Shortly after that, all the mandates were gone, if, if you recall. And the convoy then won again a couple months ago when the when that one liberal judge declared that the Emergencies Act was unconstitutional. So, you know, if if we stick to what makes us Canadian, it it, it will carry the day. So whatever you know, it, there's probably going to be protests over the, over the next six months or so. If you're going to go to one do everything in your power to make sure that it is non-violent that is the most the most important thing because the minute that it gets violent then the government has an excuse do not give them one do not give them any excuse hold the line but hold the line with a smile on your face and hugging your neighbor because that's not what they want. They they in a protest. The easiest thing to shut down a protest if it's get if it gets violent. Well, and what Justin Trudeau wants is to divide us, get us fighting amongst each other, get us isolated, and then we're weak. If we stand together, we will be stronger than all of them combined. And I'll tell you, when you're right, and you're in an argument, and someone is really hot, the thing that frustrates them the most is if you just smile and you're polite back. So don't give them what they want. 
stick to our roots stick to what's being what being canadian is and it doesn't matter if you've immigrated yesterday or if you've been born in canada if your family has been here for you know 10 generations we all know what it means to be Canada, despite what Trudeau would have everybody believe in saying that, you know, Canada doesn't have a culture like piss off Trudeau. You, you have no idea what it means to be Canadian. You, you want to know what it means to be Canadian? Trudeau? You should you should take a trip out to to Atlantic Canada and visit any of the towns there. Go out to B.C., you know, Talk to some of those people. Like, literally just walk among the common people in Canada. It was so wonderful. We had posted our video of David Sweet this afternoon and had mentioned that um, we had the opportunity to visit David at his campground resort in uh, Tabison Tack, New Brunswick. And we had at least three people that I remember in the comments reach out and say, oh, I, I wish I had known you guys were here. You know, we would have we would have shown you around town. And, and it was just really wonderful. And that's how Canadians are. We're just kind and hospitable and and that's what we need to remember even even when we're going through this garbage that this government's putting us through if we stick together we can beat it i'll say it again gander newfoundland that's all i gotta say that is canada in a nutshell gander newfoundland so and if you don't know about gander newfoundland <laughs> go look it up go look it up uh, go look up that that documentary that cbc did it's probably one of the only good things that has come out of the CBC. Uh, Daniel with a 279 super chat. Courtesy goes a long way to making things better. Yes, yes it, it does. does. And, you know, even if the other person is not being courteous to you, be courteous back. Again, don't let them take away your humanity. It's not a reflection on you if they're being horrible to you. Well, and again, and I know it sounds, it, it may sound silly to some people, right? And I get it. But you just have to look at the convoy. Yes, they were met with violence, but they were vindicated. They were proven to be absolutely valid in what they were doing. You know, sometimes being right means you got to take one on the cheek. But when, when the other side, when the government wants you to get violent in order to provide an excuse to shut down your protest... Don't give That's them that the excuse. That's the last thing that you give them. Yeah, don't give them that excuse. You give them nothing but peace, love, and the Canadian way. And it will frustrate the living hell out of them. Anyway, uh, and then it'll give them... Emotional damage! There you go. Uh, this driver with a $5 super chat. In consideration of the carbon tax, check uh, out Climate the Movie by Martin Durkin. Uh, compare to establishment evidence and draw your own conclusion. Okay, thanks very much for that, disc driver. And uh, Night Snow Sky with the 279 Super Chat. Our confederation is in grave danger, and it's up to us to keep it safe. Alice Avonlea with a $2 Super Chat. Farmers protesting, picking up uh, in Europe again. Yeah, yeah, it would it would be uh, it would be something to see a <laughs> something of that magnitude over here. Uh, starting in Newfoundland, uh, sorry, Newfoundland? Yeah, Newfoundland, I believe. Um, Brian Letwinak with a $10 super chat. Do you think that the message from the CPC may be getting a bit uh, gimmicky? I'm all for them, but it feels almost over the top. Uh, time's almost childish thoughts. Yeah, um, I, I can see that, Brian. I wasn't too thrilled with their spike the hike. Yeah, um, I thought that was kind of a weird just, way to say it. It felt like there's too many, right? There's, there's, there's too many. Um, and, and I get it. They're trying to be, they're trying to give you something to remember and they're trying to repeat it over and over again. And like, like I get it. Um, but yeah, it, it loses its authenticity, I think after a little bit. So I, I don't disagree, uh, Brian, I, I think they're trying every way they can, but you know, sometimes it's not the best, uh, Stephen C with a $5 super chat. When tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. Thomas Jefferson. There you go. Um, and we're just a lot of super chats tonight. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, Kurt Denise, uh, back with a $10 super chat. We had lost all hope in Canada. What brought us hope was leaving Surrey with the convoy and seeing all the supporters along the way. It was the most moving thing we had ever been a part of. Yeah, I bet. 
I and bet. and that's what I'm talking about. Like just the smallest act of kindness can really, really impact somebody in a very positive way. Like, I mean, I'm sure some of those people along the road, you know, sure they thought that they were being supportive and they were helping, but in terms of what did they quote unquote do, maybe they just, you know, stood by the highway with their flags and then went home afterwards. Mm-hmm. And so it seems like a small act, but really it's, it's something huge and it gives inspiration and it drives us and it connects us. Darcy Miller with a five dollar super chat, ten thousand dollar fine for any MP not answering questions directly, and found in contempt of Parliament. It boils my blood. Yeah, and like watching question period now compared to what question period was during the Harper era, like yeah, they would yell at each other and and um, you know they would shout names and things, but the question usually got answered. And that's what I don't like about question period now is it's just the liberals bragging about these programs that they're putting in that are bankrupting Canadians and not working well at all, but they're not required to answer the question. Well, the problem is the liberals know they're screwed. They, they know they have no good answers. So they just choose not to answer. And it's, it's ridiculous. Wesley Snipes with a $10 super chat. Thank you. Even speaking to a narcissist calmly and concisely, smile and nod and point at the wrong. Smile and nod with the repercussions to them. Smile and nod and walk away. That's exactly right, Wesley Snipes. Good advice. And Huntsford with a $20 super chat. Our government doesn't need an excuse to stop protesting. Uh, they caused the violence at the Freedom Convoy by extension of the police. Metal concerts um are more violent than the convoy was even with the liberal plants exactly exactly and we have 5w with a five dollar super chat i wonder if we're going to see farmer protests here with an increase on the far, far carbon tax i we hope might. so i hope we so might. um and that would really hurt because people all over the world get our grain so as a number of uh, as well as a number of other uh, other crops that we have so um, it would it would really hurt. Goko Dani with a five dollar super chat. Only the left would vilify the world's largest block party. Uh, we set the global standard for protests, small wins. Yeah, and everyone around the world noticed. Uh, Thomas uh, Soulier with a ten dollar super chat. Always remember, stay peaceful. The government specializes in violence. Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. that's it. I've said it before. If you play within the rules, then they can't touch you. And so. if they try to, they were they will be. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna have problems. Uh, Stephanie Worley with a two dollar super chat. None of us uh, is as strong as all of us. Good, good, good quote. Excellent, thank you. Good quote. Uh, Glenn with a uh, two dollar super chat. Thank you very much for that. And four twenty hitter. Nice to see you back with a ten dollar super chat. The one thing you can't take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. The last one's freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given circumstances. Victor E. Frankl. Very good. Very nice quote. Thank you very much for that uh, 420 hitter. And uh, Jerry Savoy with a $5 super chat. Cypher and Fox inspire me uh, to send that email uh, about non-confidence to the conservatives, uh, to the conservatives MPs. Thank you so much. Give me the courage. Thank you so much for uh, writing the letter. Uh, that's That's great, Jerry. Thank you very much for doing that. And Glenn Stewart with a five dollar super chat. We as Canadians are still in love, lo- are still, still love loved, in the yeah. They will always love us over yes. there. Uh, the citizens of that nation love our, our forces. Yeah, because we liberated them. Well, and not only that. Um, fun little fact from the Second World War was that um, the the princess was pregnant and uh, was was due to give birth, and so they had sectioned off like I think it was four rooms in the maternity ward of the Ottawa hospital and designated them um, that they were Dutch soil so that if the prince or princess was born, then they could be born on Dutch soil. Yeah. So uh, it's those little things. Again, it's what makes us Canadian. Um, Alice Avonlea with a $10 super chat. We are one, but uh, we are many. And from all around the world we come, I am, you are, we are Canadian. Amen to that. And uh, Night Snow Sky with a $14 super chat. Uh, if the PQ party in Quebec wins the next election, will they try to pull Quebec out of Canada? Uh, they have been up in the polls in Quebec on Canada polls, Twitter. They can try, but you still need a national re- referendum for that. And, uh, there's, it's, it's not close. It's not close. I feel like the separatist movement in Quebec is dying. Um, I think it used to be bigger back when we were probably teenagers. And then it seems like our generation 
millennials is not as much in favor of it from what I've seen. No, they just want to, they, they, they want to work. They want to grow up. They want to have a home and raise a family. That's yeah. I think important. most Canadians just don't want an overreaching government. Mm -hmm. They don't want the, this Trudeau government. That's yeah. basically it. Uh, Daniel with a $7 super chat. Gander was my first uh, posting and enjoyed every moment there. I would have stayed longer if I was asked to. Uh, I, I completely get it. That's uh, wonderful. We haven't been able to go visit yet, but uh, we're one hoping. One day. Yeah. Take the our, ferry. Our son seems to be getting better on long car rides, so we're hoping, uh, you know, eventually we'll be able to get out. All right. Um, try to get back to questions here. Okay. Uh, Ash. Do we think there will be a big reveal from the conservatives? It feels like they have a trick up their sleeves. I, I think they have they have a plan. Uh, do they have a big reveal? I don't know. I, th I think the big reveal is probably going to be something related to a scandal or a rive can, and I'm guessing it's going to you know uh, it, it's going to pop up in the next couple of weeks. That's my guess. Um, which, by the way, there is a arrive can uh, meeting, despite it being constituency week, on Tuesday at Ogo. So. Chances are we are probably going to be live streaming on Tuesday evening, so look out for that. Uh, and for those that are new here, um, everyone will tell you about our uh, our committee live streams. They uh, they're fun, and it will not be five hours this time. Uh, it will not be five hours. <laughs> I can't do any more five hour live. Sounds streams. like it's good that I fell asleep early. Yeah, <laughs> I was not well last Tuesday, so I, I appreciate all of you reaching yeah. out and asking how I was. I unfortunately suffer from migraines, and we've had like some really bad weather rip through here, and because of the low pressure, I just got these horrible, horrible migraines. And um, my migraine medication makes me pass right out, so I knew I wouldn't be able to last the whole five hours. And Barney, Barney did amazing. He so. did. Uh, look at that, 1780 viewers, 1780 likes. Great job, Amazing. Everybody. Good job, guys. Uh, Kurt and Denise with a $2 super chat. Can Canada separate from Quebec? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we are stronger together, guys. There you go. Stronger together. Uh, Diane Sylvain with a $20 super chat. Part 2, MP Pandemoff made a point of order regarding Bar uh, Barrett's comment to Khalid that I quoted earlier saying MP should not be called dumb. Her words, Chair said he did not hear the word dumb. You cannot make it up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Roscoe Pico, good to see you with a $5 super chat. I personally think the government needs a Terry Tate office room linebacker. Woot, woot. Here comes Terry. Uh, for those who don't know who Terry Tate is, um, there is this, uh, there's a series of, um, of like mini, mini commercials and it was Terry Tate office linebacker. So... <laughs> Oh, and he was like tackling people in the yeah. office. I think I remember that. It was so funny. Oh gosh, I must have been pretty young when it that happened. It was so funny. So, you know, <laughs> don't go down that YouTube rabbit hole because then YouTube will start suggesting very strange things to you. Uh, you'll probably get into the old uh, uh, Nutrigrain uh, commercials and, and Proline commercials. And then you'll be on YouTube until like five in the morning. Wendy M with a 279 Super Chat. Thank you very much, Wendy M and uh looks like we have one more uh pandemonium with five dollars thank you very much uh fox i get migraines from barometric pressure too my advice is do not move to calgary the chinooks would be a living hell oh, there yeah you go. i can imagine it would be bad like it's it's bad enough here sometimes and i i couldn't imagine if it's like that all the time <laughs> so <laughs> um i, I just i just <laughs> Every now and then I see one of Barbie's comments. Starts polishing the top of the bar with the cloth. Not to do jobs. You good, bud? <laughs> it's, it's always a good time on the uh, Northern Perspective uh, uh, speakeasy, isn't it? Yeah, I have uh, a question from Rob Barkhouse. It says, are Cypher and Fox trying to get current or ex-liberals or NDP on the show? Yes. Yeah, we haven't sat down. I think we want to sit down and write a list of like people that will be most likely to respond or that might be um, most interesting to talk to or even that maybe we can drive to them instead of um, having to rely on their AV software um, so that we can actually get like with our nice camera and stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah. Wendy, I'm with a $7 super chat. How is the block a federal party? I've never had an answer to this question. So uh, political parties don't need to run in all ridings. Um, you'll get some really strange parties, like, for example, the Rhino Party, um, the Marijuana Party used to be a party. I don't the know Marxist Leninist are. Party. Yeah, the Marxist Leninist Party. And they don't run uh, candidates in every single riding. They just kind of run them 
where they can afford to run them. Um, in the Bloc's case, they've chosen only to run candidates in ridings in Quebec. So even though it's a federal party, they only run ridings, uh, they only run candidates in ridings in Quebec, and there's nothing in our constitution that's against that. Yeah, so um, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's actually nothing to do with the Bloc. It's ha- it has to do with party rules and, and how parties can, you know, are allowed to run. So um, it, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, and we have Icewind Dale, uh, 33, member for two months. We absolutely need to get organized. And the Conservatives are actually getting organized on, is it April Saturday 6th. the 6th? Yeah. Um, so, again, you can check out that link. I think it's still pinned to the top of the chat here. Um, and you can find your Electoral Riding Association, uh, your EDA, and you can send them an email um, by clicking that link and finding your association and let them know, hey, I want to join the door knocking on Saturday the 6th. And, uh, yeah, it's a big thing. They're doing it all across Canada from what I understand. Uh, White Ravens with a question. What is your favorite fly fishing lure? I don't go fly fishing. <laughs> what about Barnaby? Does Barnaby go fly fishing? Was that for, for Barnaby or perhaps Jester? Not sure. Um, but Yeah, sorry, um, we don't go fly fishing. That was interesting. Uh, thanks for that, Barnaby. Um, Pam Lambert, and it, it, this is probably something that went right over our heads. So, uh, Pam Lambert, uh, has uh, legislation been passed to change the voting gate? No, it hasn't been passed. It, it has it been, has been read, presented. Yeah, it's been presented to the House. It's gone through first reading, and then they will do second reading, make any changes if they have to do second reading. Then it'll go to committee. Uh, and then it'll go to third reading, and then if it passes third reading, it goes over to the Senate, and they get to uh, work with it from there. This is great. Bubble Avenue with a $14 super chat. Staring off stage left in Darren Anthony's voice. We love Cypher and Fox. Cypher and Fox smell like fresh baked cinnamon birds. <laughs> they are the best people ever. Seriously, a great channel and community. I am not reading this from a script. <laughs> I was going to say, are you reading something, Mr. Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Reading is bad and okay. <laughs> That was great, Bob Lavender. That was amazing. Uh, Don Boulay. Uh, what do you got for me? Uh, Northern Perspective. Uh, have you ever thought of opening a side dating site? <laughs> a dating site? Why a dating site? Call it Dating Perspective? I don't know. I don't know. Tell us. I'm, I'm curious. Why a dating site? Yeah. Because we're so amazing at giving dating advice, I, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> we've been married for too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in a year, we'll open a divorce dating site. Oh, so. no. Uh, 5W with a $2 super chat. Should I run for the block it up? <laughs> you know what? You that try. would be funny as all heck can be. I don't know if they'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what you should do, uh, uh, 5W, is call it block you know you could run for the block but add a k and then it would be a new political party there you go and and call it the block quebecois <laughs> um and then drew johns with a uh question uh, with the rcmp ramping up for a possible revolt i personally think the canadian forces will have to be called in just in case of a revolution what are your thoughts i think that's a little too premature um what they what they have essentially said is they anticipate that the next five years are going to be um, tumultuous concerning yeah and it's because they are are you know they're they're looking at all of the economic reports coming in and despite the fact that trudeau would have everyone believe otherwise um you know there 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 is a recession right now and it's going to get worse if something doesn't change you're going to see all of these people that purchased homes for COVID prices that went through the roof. All of those mortgages are going to be coming due over the next eight months. And that's going to go very, very badly. Now, if the if the liberals end up spending, like increasing the budget deficit, which is a possibility, then what are you going to see happen? Well, you're probably going to see interest rates go up again because the Bank of Canada is going to have to um, raise interest rates to fight that inflation. So it all depends on on, on what's happening, but nothing is imminent. Um, but 
people are going to get progressively more frustrated and and that is uh, what the uh, what the RCMP is calling calling out in in terms of concern um, Jerry Savoy with a five dollar super chat please bring back Daryl Stinson the House of uh, Commons uh, or or wondering uh, if you could do an interview with him <laughs> that'd be great to get that would be on. amazing you know what I'm gonna put that down on my list that's a great idea Jerry Savoy um, it's you're a legend on our channel <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do you have the gonads of the fortitude to come on our channel you son of a yeah no don't call the interviewees names yeah, right um, i don't care if it's part of the quote uh 420 hitter with a five dollar super chat you need cartman meme you will respect my authority for when the chair needs to step in. you know the other one we need is when is when he's dressed up to go on that talk show he's like whatever i do what i want yeah <laughs> Put a chicken in and make it gay. Oh, um, no. Uh, Night Snow Sky with a 279 super chat. I hope Pierre makes Canada a republic. And uh, Glenn Stewart with a $2 super chat. I hope the country stays peaceful. Yes, don't we all? And Jonathan Hodges, welcome to NP Supporter. Welcome aboard, sir. Uh, 3 p.m. with uh, 3 p.m. John. Oh, no, John K. I'm not sure what 3 p.m. is, Barnaby. Um not sure what that is anyway uh what are the thoughts of the block voting for the budget i saw Lego say he has never um i was actually blessed shit i think uh he's never supported a liberal budget uh yeah no he, i i i would be shocked i think everyone would be shocked if the block actually supported the budget i am very i am very very comfortable in saying they will vote against the budget uh pandemonium with five gifted northern perspective memberships thank you very very much for that uh funny boy do you believe that outside sovereignty control like the WEF is in charge of the political landscape of Canada? No. Um, possibly WEF influencing decisions by JT and Jagmeet, as people say. I think there's some influence going on there in terms of policy. Uh, what do you think, Fox? Um, I think it's like this. So I think the WEF, I don't think there's like some puppet master that's controlling what everybody says and does like in government what i think it is i think that the wef provides a forum for people who are like-minded to congregate and then they bounce their stupid ideas off of each other and go oh yeah that's a really good idea yeah i'm going to do that in my country and then they go back to their countries and try to implement these stupid ideas it's kind of like um i'm going to nerd out for a minute here but if you go to fan expo in toronto you're not going to see people that are really big uh, into sports there, right? Because it's a convention for nerds, like it, Star Trek nerds, comic book fans, like all of us, all the nerds, right? So you're not going to see um, conservatives at the WEF. So you're not going to see people with conservative-minded values, opinions, thoughts at the WEF. Um, all you're getting is the people that it attracts, which are the the left like the altruistic left that oh you know if only we could do this then the world would be perfect that's the type of people you're going to attract so it's not necessarily like a puppet master situation it's a let's have a meeting space for all these people who all think the same anyways and then they bounce their dumb ideas off each other and bring it back to their own countries um yeah and there's there's a there's more than a few people in the liberal government that are you know members of the world economic forum um they're the morons that are spending like tens of thousands of dollars a year to, to actually go there. Um, the WEF would like to say that, you know, oh, you know, we, we control all these countries. Like, th th they don't. Um, they have people that come and attend the forum um, that are that have a lot more money than them. And, uh, you know, there's billionaires that go there. And, and as Fox said, like, th they're all talking about you know different policies and and yeah some of them bring bring them back so that's why i mean they're they're influenced by what goes on at the world economic forum but i think their minds are open to that anyways yeah like even we... if pierre went to the wef for example he's not going to bring any of that back to canada because he thinks it's all stupid yeah but we have seen no evidence that klaus schwab has his finger on you know what's going on you know with within the policies in, in 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 the government of canada and if he does he's doing a terrible job well and that's an important thing that we haven't seen any evidence this is an evidence-based channel although we will extrapolate from the evidence that we have 
we have not seen evidence that this is what's going on. Yeah, there's a lot of things that Klaus says, but it doesn't make it true. So um, now if we're presented with evidence that, uh, that that's that concrete, says otherwise, then yeah. sure, you know, then then that's easy. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, that's that's our take on that. Um, Claire and Wright, uh, I have my key fob by the door, but no gas in the tank. <laughs> okay, so for those that don't know what that's about, um, so the OPP, uh, sorry, no, Toronto, Toronto Police, Police. Toronto Police um, issued a statement uh, suggesting to residents that they keep their car keys at the front door to make it easy for people that break into their house wanting to steal their car. That way, it will keep them safe in that situation. So rather than dealing with the car theft, um, <laughs> they, they, they're just suggesting that you make it easy. So what that uh, comment is referencing is, um, is saying, well, you know, have fun, take my keys, but there's no gas in my car. Uh, Kim Hartz with a $10 super chat. Freeland is a WEF trustee and we as taxpayers pay for it. Uh, how does that benefit Canada? And, you, and you're absolutely right, uh, Kim. I don't think she not. should be permitted to do that at no, all. No, she should not. That's a huge conflict of interest. But the thing is, okay, so um, Cypher, for example, was going to run for office. In, in this hypothetical world, let's say he, he became an MP and wanted to um, work with or be on the board of one of the charities that helps our son, like a local charity would he then not be permitted to do that because he's an MP? So I think that's the reason why they say, well, you can't sit on, or why they don't say as an MP, you can't sit on boards for quote unquote nonprofits. Um, but like, this is just, I think it was intended for local stuff that supports your community, not things like the WEF. I think that's too extreme that she's sitting on the board for this global organization. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I don't like to, in my opinion, I would I would suggest that legislation be implemented to prohibit any government sitting officials to, to be sitting on any boards whatsoever. Right, but that's what I said. If you say something like that, then you can't help out your community. You can't help the local nonprofits. Well, you, you can, you just can't sit on the board. Still, though, a lot of experience would be coming, like that an MP could provide, they may be able to provide as a member of the board. I, I don't disagree, but... Technically, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation is a nonprofit too. So, the the, the issue is is that you know it becomes abused. You know, maybe if you you talk about um, you know nonprofits with an annual revenue of you know less than say twenty thousand dollars or something small, but it, the the intent of the legislation would to prevent conflicts of interest with um, with significant. Sig organizations with significant influence let's just put it that way so um that's the <laughs> that's the two minute solution to that problem but um it's a very valid point kim and uh, uh and thank you for bringing that up because uh she should absolutely not be allowed to do that and spiky mikey 33 with the five dollar super chat my phone provider is looking out for me they tagged a call the other day a spam it was uh for <laughs> styles office <laughs> <There you go. laughs> liberal spam I don't mind paying my, my bill when they're uh, filtering it that. Um, Stephanie Worley with a $5 super chat. Didn't uh, uh, Carbon Barbie uh, pay the WEF to write the justification for the carbon tax? Allegedly. Um, allegedly they did. But it doesn't mean that it's going to do any good. Uh, because we all know it's 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 crap. Uh, and, and the re reason why we all know it's crap is their own parliamentary budget office it says, it's, says crap. it's crap. Yeah. So... There you go. Um, let's see. What else do we have? We have repeat in, uh, in BC. Uh, do you think there's a point that Jughead's membership turns on them for failing to, uh, in his appointed task? Yes. It's starting to happen. You're seeing it all over Twitter. That's why I'm, we are going to be paying very, very close to the polls in the next couple of weeks because everybody sees that. And Northern Perspective has been doing our own light trolling on on jag meat and poking him as well so um so we've been we've been watching what he's been posting and reminding him that hey you just you just made everybody angry last week i don't think there's anybody that actually supports what you're doing anymore so um so we will be watching that with great interest 
Five uh, W with a five dollar super chat. Trying to check the block site, but can't find the English link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Great. Uh, uh, let's see, Valerie. Why don't the liberals have to put all of the money being sent out of the country through the House of Commons? Billions sent to Ukraine so far. Technically, they do. Yeah, because they put it under like the umbrella of foreign aid, don't yeah. they? And then they're like, oh well, you know, if we've got ten billion set aside for foreign aid, let's send half of it to Ukraine and or guess whatever. Who voted for it? Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. Um, De Curly Dak. Uh, can the mainstream media run without the budget? Um, not really. They'd have to take out massive loans. Like the CBC would have to take out a $1.3 billion loan, and I don't think they're going to be able to do that. And she was still whining that it wasn't enough money. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Maybe make better news that people want to watch and you won't have a problem. Yeah, do better. Do better. I think we have more monthly viewers than uh, than they do. Um, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris Waterton, uh, 12. Have you guys uh, seen the story of Paul Champagne, former federal employee who scammed D&D &D of $100 million in 1992? Very similar scam to a Rive Kitten. Um, heard of that, but I haven't I dug haven't, into it. I haven't, but uh, yeah, I'll write that down and I'll check it out. Thank you for that. Uh, Alma Sweeze, uh, honestly, thank you guys. A breath of fresh air and light and darkness. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much for that. We, thank you. That's that, nice to hear. Thank that you. That is literally our fuel in our gas tank. Um, peace trading. Um... Uh, for us that currently live in a riding that is in a PC stronghold, who and how can we effectively message liberals and NDP? Pick one. Yeah. Like literally, like you can pick your 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 the the MP of the NDP or liberals that irritates you the most, or or you think is influential the most. So NDP, I would suggest say uh, Peter Julian, Jagmeet Singh, um, you know maybe Matthew Green, or pick pick any of the liberals. And, and just write. It, it, it doesn't matter. You, they, they may ask you for your, uh, postal, for your postal code. code because, and you can just reply to them. Um, I don't need to provide my postal code. You're a member of parliament. You're obligated to reply to me. Well, they're not obligated to reply, but... Okay, so if you contact an MP and you're like, oh, I need help with my tax forms, which is something they will help you with, um, they want you to contact your MP because that's their responsibility. But if you are contacting say the minister of heritage pascal saint ange and you want to know about bill c18 well she's responsible for it so you contact her and if she's like well what's your postal code that's not irrelevant or that's not relevant what is relevant is that you are the minister for this thing that i need to talk to you about there you go yep uh and six years uh sorry uh from princess six uh princess thickness uh, six years to get a pension is very unfair to hardworking Canadians who have to work at least 50 years to get ours, and it's not enough to live on. Well, what's really unfair, Princess Sickness, is they get their uh, MP pension and they get their CPP. So, um, Well, and the other thing that we found out from talking to David uh, this past weekend was um, that after an MP... Uh, you know, they go to election and say they don't get reelected, if they don't qualify for their pension... Or, or is it when they qualify for their pension as well? No, so so it, it doesn't matter. So let's say, let's say they serve for four years and they don't get reelected, they get a severance pay. Yeah, they get fifty percent of their salary for the year. Yeah. So they get six months of severance, and that's on the taxpayer dime. Isn't that nice? Because they're technically fired. So. Yeah. Um, Noella, how much government revenue has been lost in the? Uh, oil and gas center for say uh, health funding or whatever um, so that would be very difficult to, to put a number on but I would say it's in the billions because there's the pipeline that should have been uh, fixed or, or fixed finished there's the export contracts that should have been signed there's the oil and gas additional refineries that should have been stood up like there's there's so much lost economic opportunity over the last eight years. It's it's mind-boggling to even think about about how much money has has been. I don't want to say lost, but not even had the opportunity to be collected. Listless receptionist uh, with a question: When are the next batch of polls? Are they weekly, bi-weekly, or random? They're typically weekly by the major pollsters. Um, what I recommend you do, um, you know, maybe I'll paste this in chat. Um, 
Let's see if actually there's any updates here. Probably not. Oh, we have the abacus numbers in. Excellent. Oh, and they're very good. Let's take a look, folks. Excellent. So I'm going to paste this link in chat. This uh, this aggregates all the polls. It's kind of like 338 Canada, but this uh, this gives you the breakdown of every poll and the date. So um, as you can see, abacus. Now, abacus is a little bit more conservative friendly. Um, but uh, my goodness, the the NDP are down to 19 uh, in Abacus. They I, looks like they actually went up from the previous one, which is hard to believe. And what's the sample size on that? Um, 35.50. So that's it's a, a really good poll size. Yeah, it's um, a decent sample size. I know. I was speaking in the comments with somebody about their most recent Nanos poll, and they said, "Oh, you know, the Conservatives went down five points." And it's like, yeah, but their sample sizes are always small. They're only a thousand. So a sample size of 3,500 is a very good sample size for this abacus poll. It gives you a really, really broad picture. Yeah, and it's it's online as well. So um, you know, there's uh, it's a bit more accessible, which is why the uh, the sample size is larger, right? So abacus, I think they keep calling until they get a thousand results. So. Uh, anyhow, so that's 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 where they're at. That's where they're at. So, uh, anyhow, uh, let's see. We have a five dollar super chat from four twenty hitter. CO two is a hoax. I wonder why they stopped publishing the change in Earth's magnetic field strength a few years ago. It's what's uh, driving extreme weather. Um, I'm suspicious about the whole co2 thing because if it really was as bad as these politicians say they wouldn't be jet setting all over the world and all over canada on private jets yeah and taking taking you know suvs around and uh, those suvs are not electric just so we're all clear on that if it was really bad if it was really going to kill humanity they wouldn't be doing that right the funny thing about the paris accords is everyone flew to paris <laughs> <laughs> Like, you can't make this up. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Blaze Lionheart, good to see you. How do the Conservatives intend to attract talent for employment in Canada? Um, well, here's the thing. You have to make it attractive for businesses, right? And how do you make it attractive for businesses? Unfortunately, unfortunately, you have to give businesses some tax breaks. Now, you can do that in in a way that incentivizes you know certain industries so what what they've talked about doing to you know you know because we, we all care about the environment it's the degree <laughs> the degree in which we're going to be killing ourselves to actually you know save the environment so the the conservative plan in in approaching the environment is to incentivize you know good green energy sustainable green energy not like short-term intermittent power technology like solar and, and wind and stuff like that that would be fine if you could store it which you can't so it is problematic when it comes to a power grid but when you look at things like micronuclear reactors for example that is a very good technology so they would be looking at technologies like that and incentivizing them um, and then you know those are potentially looking at higher technology companies and then that would incentivize those higher technology companies to invest into Canada, which then requires, you know, people with lots of brains. So that attracts, you know, the potential talent into Canada um, to, to actually work at those companies. So that's just a very tiny, small example. Um, but the other thing that they need to do is they need to make Canada affordable to live in again. So we stop losing people and going down to, you know, places like Florida where there is no income tax. So, um, there's a, there's, it's a multifaceted answer to, uh, to your question, unfortunately. And Susan Grant, I disagree with Cypher on the CPP. They are trying to avoid, uh, Alberta and now they want to invest in infrastructure. Not sure what I, uh, had said on that, uh, Susan Grant, but I'll, uh, I'll take, I'll take your point. Um, uh, repeat in BC. Uh, my favorite story from the Vancouver Olympics. We welcome the world. Welcome to Canada. The nice guys until the puck drops. That's yes. right. That's right. Trevor W. Um, aren't there more conservative uh, senators to be posted? Potentially. Potentially. 
Uh, and it's all going to change when the government changes, right? Sheba Kobe, uh, so I gather from all the, all the times members have said the other place in the house that they're forbidden uh, by the... Uh, by rule to name the Senate, is that correct? Yeah, it's like some parliamentary tradition. Um, but they they say the other place. Um, that, that's that's one that we haven't bothered to look up in terms of historical record, but um, but yet they'll say senators. So, um, but yeah, or the other house, or yeah, yeah, it's odd. Uh, no doubt it goes back to, um, you know, the early, early times of the House of Commons. Like, you know, why is, why is the carpet, you know, red in the House of Commons? You know, all or you mean the Senate? Sorry, green in the House of Commons uh, versus red in, uh, in, in the Senate, right? So, um, Genghis Tron, <laughs> you can do it. You can cover Justin Trudeau with bees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. There you go. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, Norm Nicholson, uh, have any PMs? Have any PMs ever been assassinated? I don't think so. No. I know two had died in office, but I think the like those were deaths from natural causes. One of them was McDonald, and I don't recall the other one. Um, Zipper, you can do the next one. I'll look it up real quick. Yep, Leslie Robbins. Do you know if there's going to be any chance Pierre Polyev will address change? and or improvements uh, for people on the disability plan for each province. So it's hard to know, Leslie, because they're right now they're talking about the, the really big overarching issues, right? The, the issues that are literally affecting everyone are housing, it's the carbon tax, it's the cost of living, um, and they're, they're addressing the major causes of those problems, which is like immigration, um, it's, you know, lack of housing, those types of things. So right now, um, they're, they're sticking to the very, very top level issues. As they get into their election platforms, um, they, will, they will talk more about that. If you go to, um, I believe the website is conservative.ca. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah, conservative.ca. Uh, you can actually look up their, their policy platform up there and, um, and, and look for some specific things. And those are things that they voted on at the last conservative convention. And you may get a bit of a hint as to what might, might be in, uh, in their next election platform. So that's the best I can do for you there. And while you were answering that question, I found out that two prime ministers have died in office, John A. Macdonald and John Thompson, both of natural causes. There you go. So no assassinations. Uh, sabotage KCCO. Uh, can I ask if any uh, MPs would come on a live stream? I, I think because of the hours we keep, um, it, it would probably be a no. Um, I mean, never say never, but... Uh, just we have to do all of our work after our son's in bed um so and i think you're running out of days to take off work <laughs> yeah because <laughs> uh you know it would be you know i, I do have I, I do have integrity at my job you know I, I i don't do any northern perspective work while i'm supposed to be working because that would be unethical um so uh, so I want to make sure if I'm at work, you know, they're paying me for the time. And, you know, when, when we're doing Northern perspective work, I'm not being paid for my, my job at, uh, during the day. Uh, Marie Perrin with a $2 super chat tax businesses too much. They leave Canada. Yep. That's exactly it. Um, and Trudeau has to actually pay businesses to, to come in. Um, now you could say that's a subsidy, but well, if it's a one-time payment, I'm not sure if that's a subsidy. Glenn Sturt with a $2 super chat. Our footprint is 1.5%. Yes, it sure is. Which means even if we get to zero, it will mean diddly squat in terms of the planet. And we're still going to have all of these alleged, um, uh, events that are caused by alleged uh, climate change. So even if you believe that, which is fine, doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's not going to do anything. What you have to do is you have to get China to stop increasing. Like they were at 21% a few years ago. Guess what they're at now? 30%. So China doesn't care. China's the problem. Get them to stop increasing the amount of coal plants that they're actually firing if you care so much about carbon carbon emissions. Because our 1.5% is not going to do it. 
And <laughs> Glenn Stewart with a two dollar super chat. My cat loves Fox's voice. Aw. There you go. That's awesome. Our cats are not in the room at the moment. <laughs> yes, because they will uh, They've been monopolize out. the live stream. So. Um, has PP said anything about our military other than investing in it? Um, he, uh, he's, he's talked a few t more than a few times about that. So that's definitely something. He's talked about um, <laughs> making it so that you don't have to have uh, active service members going to, uh, to food banks. He's talked about that as well. So... Um, Tammy Robinson, do you think we really have 18 months to wait for an election? I don't believe so. Yeah, I think it, everything's just too volatile in Parliament right now. Like, if you listen to the way the MPs talk to each other in the House of Commons, in committee, all the scandals, like, I don't think it's going to last a full 18 months. I don't think we're going to the end of the term. Um, I am less sure of a spring election than I was in January, but we've got till June, so who knows what could happen. Um, Diane Sylvain can ask Cypher and Fox if it's ever done in committee to direct ministers to actually answer questions by the chair. Yes, yes, it, it has happened. Uh, Freeland was so disrespectful to committee. Yeah, she, yes, she was. Um, uh, I think it's been done before where uh, I know they've called witnesses to order. <laughs> um, and uh, but well, I have to say, uh, do I recall a specific time where they have asked the chair to call a minister to order? I don't remember a specific time, but they could do it. I think we'll take one last question. I like this one, so I'm going to read it. It says, uh, uh, from Mama Philly, uh, why do some MPs have the title honorable and some do not? So once an MP becomes a cabinet minister, uh, they gain the title of honorable. So, for example, the honorable Christia Freeland. Um, they are permitted to keep that title for life. So if, for example, after the next election, the Liberals lose, Christia Freeland is no longer a member of cabinet. She's just a regular member of the Liberal Party. She's still referred to as honorable. And I'm going to uh, just address this one from the Dutch Tulip. Do our, politician ha do our politicians have what it takes to actually turn this country around? So um, here's, here's the thing that I'll say to that. Before our, our interview started with um, Larry Brock, uh, Stephanie Cousy, Kelly Block, and Garnet Jenis, um, we were actually very fortunate because Larry Brock came in about... 15 minutes? 15 to 20 minutes before the rest of them did. Yeah, because everybody else was in committee and it ran long, and Larry Brock was not in committee that day. So he had come in um, the time we were supposed to start, um, and everybody else came in 15 minutes later because it got held up. So he sat down, so I just started talking to him. <laughs> and um, I tell you, um, he didn't change um, from when I was talking to him off off the record um from when you know we were talking to him on the record and when he says that you know he he became an mp because he wanted to legislate justice he's not joking he's not he's not fibbing that's literally why he's there yeah it wasn't for show um he he's literally he, he got literally fed up with um with, with how the, the criminal justice system was working. So he decided, I can't do anything from here. So I got to become an MP and then I'll be able to do something. Um, and I think they, they definitely can. Um, because the team that Pierre has put together is not based on diversity. It's not based on because it's 2015. Referencing Trudeau ask, asked why his cabinet is 50% women. His team is based on who's best for the job. As it should be. And there's some really talented people that he has on his team. Now, jury will remain out until they're in office and are actually doing what they have to do. But given given that they're tackling hard questions and they're they're willing to take a stand against the very vocal minority of the woke movement that gives us hope it gives us hope that they're going that they're ready to stand against it and they're going to do what's necessary and legislate what's necessary and return this country to us again and all of these people screaming and crying about 
oh well you know you know trans people need to be treated equally blah 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 like no one no one cares like people people just, will will treat you with respect if you respect them yeah just be a good human being and that that's it people like, will treat you kindly yeah like no one wishes ill on any person who who calls themselves trans but guess what um you cross the line when you start legislating what people have to say that's the problem so when you start legislating that now you're crossing a line because you know there's no line that is legislating you to call me to call me cipher you know a man there's there's no legislation that's that that does that people can say well you know if you misgender somebody like come on let's 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 be real here we are the only western democracy to have legislated speech and you know you're trying to indoctrinate all of these kids and they say they're not but we've seen a what was it a something like a 10,000 percent increase in the amount of teenagers that are identifying as such and again i don't have any problem with people that if they they grow up and they've they've identified that they have gender dysphoria I think 99.9% .9 of people have nothing but sympathy for you. But don't be bringing that on everybody else. Live your life and people will let you live your life and respect you for it. And the people that don't are terrible people. Pure and simple. That's what it comes down to. But again, I go back to if you just look at Canadians being Canadians, they don't care who you are. They don't care where you're from. If you're interested in living in peace, then they are interested in living in peace. And they will support you in doing that. But not at the expense of everybody else's freedom. That's what it comes down to. So um, so as it comes back to the conservatives, um, yeah, I, th I think they can do it. And they better. If they don't, we're going to be there to call them out. Because we have all of their promises, we've had all, all of their clips, we have everything that they've said and everything that they're going to do. So when they get in, now you better do it. Because we're going to be making sure that you do it and we're going to call you out if you don't. I don't have any concerns that they're not going to do it. I'm just saying. You know, you've, you've, been, you've been giving Canadians exactly what they want to hear and it's what we need to hear because that's the plan that needs to happen in order to right this ship. So, you know, as soon as they take over the wheel of, of Canada, my message to them is do it with care, do it with, do it responsibly and do it respecting the people that put you in that position. That's who put you there. Well, that's it. If they screw up royally, they're going to be a one-term government and that'll be that. And the goal of any politician and any political party is to maintain government. Yeah. Uh, some remaining super chats. Let's get through those. Josh, about the $10 super chat regarding our military. It's crazy to think 20-year-old signing up to serve, assuming their parents had them young, could be asked to fly a plane or serve on a ship built before their parents were born. Right? Right? And, yeah. That's, and, that's bad. And maybe not given ammunition because we don't have a lot. Um, Johnny O with a $7 super chat. Conservatives need to shut down an adjourned committee with Freeland due to her being uncooperative uh, would be a needed slap. Yeah, that would be nice. Eh? But the, that would be exactly what she would want. Right, because the interesting thing is you cannot compel a minister to come to committee. You cannot summon them to committee. You can ask them to come, but they have a right to refuse. Yeah. Uh, Michael Sh or Michelle Champagne with a $5 super chat. Would a narcissist rather resign or lose very badly in an election? Um, I think um probably lose badly in an election well because resigning is admitting defeat before it's happened yep. i suppose and losing an election there's always somebody else to blame on that uh goko dining with a five dollar super chat what will it take to get uh, the brockinators wish list and make arrests seize everything and execute their duty like they did to the truckers um well it depends on you know who they have evidence on um, but there's there's definitely some people that we know of now that uh, I think are definitely going to be charged and probably go to jail. And you've seen a couple of them on committee over the last couple of weeks. 
So um, that is ongoing. And um, I think the sooner you get the liberals out of office, the sooner these investigations will probably wrap up. Uh, Diane Sylvain with a $20 super chat. As you know, I totally resonated with Brock. He did say he would be ready to, to come back on. I wrote to him on SNC Lavalin and thanking him for all he does and being on your show. I hope he reads my letter. Uh, he walks his talk. He sure does. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he'll read your letter, Diane. Um, Daniel with a 279 super chat. Respect is not a one way street. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And respect is earned, not bestowed. So. Um, anyhow, folks, that's uh, 11.39. Um, so that wraps up our our crazy week. So thank you, everybody, for joining in. Uh, again, if you haven't, check out our, our interview with the, the MPs. We do apologize for the sound. They were in a boardroom. There's not much we could do about it. We cleaned it up. It actually sounded a lot worse. <laughs> so Next time we'll go to Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time we'll go to Ottawa and we'll get it in person. Um, but um, uh, but hopefully we will uh, we will get Mr. Brock on in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have another MP that we're trying to uh, uh, get on as well. Uh, and we're going to be reach, continue reaching out to the other parties to see if one of them will sit down with us. And uh, yeah, it should be an interesting couple of weeks. Um, committee live stream on Tuesday night. And who else? Know, who who knows what other surprises that the conservatives are going to throw at us, or Trudeau for that matter. So, uh, but on that note, thanks everybody for your support, and uh, you guys take care out there. And talk to a liberal, talk to somebody in a grocery line, whatever you need to do to uh, to spread the word. And just remember, be kind to the people around you, because especially right now when we're all struggling, you don't know who needs it. Sometimes just something simple, like checking on your neighbor hey i haven't seen you in a while are you okay do you need anything something simple like that can really 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 help someone and uh, last but not least thank you jester and thank you barnaby for your work at the bar and jester for your work as the bouncer so <laughs> we appreciate it <laughs> and it was thankfully it was a boring night for jester i'm sure so anyway take care everybody have a good week and we'll see you in the comments thank you very much hunsford for your two dollars super chat thanks for everything you are welcome thank you all for everything have a good night